Dragon Ball Super Super Hero promises to bring us a new style of animation for Dragon Ball. A 3D CGI 2D hybrid. Who are you winking at, bro? Bro, your faces, bro. Come on. Now, if he was in the room with me, he'd be on my lap. Prepare yourself, Dan Saiyan. What is up Black Squad, Blackscape here, and today I thought I would review a video by another great content creator on the channel here, Geekdom101. He dropped this video with Opai Senpai, or I think he's just going by Senpai now, and this video is talking about the CGI, the future of Dragon Ball Super, and the movie Dragon Ball Super Superhero, and I watched the entire video yesterday, and I was really interested in some of the takes that these guys had, and some of the insight on the actual industry as a whole, and exactly what we could see from the future of Dragon Ball if CGI is the answer, and why it would be so, because there are some answers here in this in this video that I'm about to review, guys, and uh, they are startling. So let me ask you this, which would you rather accept? A fully CGI Dragon Ball like Pixar, or a fully live action Dragon Ball similar to like an MCU project, like done well in that aspect? Let me know in the comments below, CGI Pixar Dragon Ball, or live action MCU style Dragon Ball. Let me know in the comments below, that's gonna be the question for today. But let's go ahead and jump right in. Tell us what you think about this. First of all, what are your initial reactions to the style? Because I remember you called me and you really weren't too happy with it, but what do you think? Uh, I was doing a live stream, I hated it. I was okay with the fact that they're doing 3D. There's, there's no issue with 3D. There's been very successful movies in 3D. The problem is that they weren't following some of the rules, the pr I should say principles of animation. For example, when Goku was jumping up and, ra and down, look at my hair. Right, my hair, my hair bounces up and down. Goku, on the other hand, his hair was stiff. It wasn't even moving. It was very uh, disappointing. So I have concerns. I also didn't like the fact that they were frame skipping. I actually took, broke apart the, the seconds they were. while the camera was rotating. And there were sections where they were doing duplicate frames for like a good... Uh, 10 frames or just duplicate frames. It was really weird. And this is definitely something that I completely noticed in the trailer and it was it was striking to say the least because of the movements that Goku had compared to the original trailer for DBS Broly. It's the exact same movements. He was doing the warm-up thing which I liked that they were, you know, reminiscing on that that they were they were showcasing that. But at the same time, the one difference between Shintani style Goku and DBS Broly and the Goku that we saw from that CGI, quasi CGI trailer was the hair. The hair in the Shintani style moves very similar to how early Dragon Ball Z hair used to and Dragon Ball hair used to, where it wasn't like super spiky and stiff, looked like you can cut your arm on it. It was more fluid, especially the Super Saiyan hair. It was very movable. It just acted like normal hair. Well, in the trailer, yeah, exactly what Opai said. It just, it's stiff as all hell. It's like a stiff board. And that is the first red flag that uh, the CGI itself may not be as good as the animation it's trying to replace. I love that it. movie. I love Evangelion, but I haven't gotten to that one yet. I have the other ones, but not. I have not gotten to 3.0 plus one yet. That's the newest one. Oh, okay, so, so the movie came out this year. Right, But stu Studio Kara, which is a studio that was working on that, they were actually mixing in 2D with 3D. And one of the programs that they were using, that this began in 2019, they actually began to fund Blender, which is an open source 3D program, completely free. So they, they love Blender so much. Not only did they start using Blender in their production studio, but they actually started to fund the Blender development program. So some of the uh, 3D animation from that movie was using Blender. And, there, and they had other 3D programs before. There's the industry standards like Maya and 3DS by Autodesk. And that's what they were using before. The problem is that the cost of that per person is about 1700 a month. It's very expensive. So this is a highly interesting point here when it came to the animation industry over there in Japan and some of the movies that have trying to make the transition from a 2D, solely 2D, to something that is revolving around 3D. And you can see that happening in like a lot of Japanese movies, a lot of them, especially with big budgets, just to try to blend the 3D with the, with the 2D. 
to varying effects. Sometimes the effects aren't as good as you would like, but sometimes they're actually not too bad. Now, this is another interesting point that Opie was making, and that is how the industry as a whole is doing this 2D and 3D thing. They're trying to merge more into that 3D market, sometimes making full on fledged 3D animated movies. Now, what he's explaining is that companies using programs that are free but work so well, like Blender, can save millions of dollars on animation compared to their competitors that cost so much more per person to use and to animate with. And that is pushing the industry to embrace Blender even more, which Blender is not a bad program to use. A lot of content creators, even here on YouTube, not just in the Dragon Ball community, but in the larger community as a whole, in the animation community as a whole, they're seeing that animation, 3D animation, is a lot easier to use and make really fast with Blender compared to when you draw it, when you draw it on, on the computer, when you make art any other traditional way, it's better to use Blender. I mean, Devil Artemis comes out with a brand new animation every other day and they're top tier high quality animations. Devil Artemis is one of the boys here and he compared to a lot of even animations that we've seen from huge studios that probably have used Blender before or have used other programs, his animations look a lot better. His fight scenes are really well done. So if these companies see that you can use something that is free, you can use something that is so easily being able to be used and that will save you money in the end, of course you're gonna mix that with 2D, save yourself some money and save yourself a huge amount of the movie when it comes to the budget. The big issue is that a bunch of Toei animators have already been uh, contracted to other shows. We have the um, the Dragon Quest show, which a lot of the Dragon Ball Super Broly people are on that show, which is why it looks so good. We have, obviously, One Piece is still running. Digimon is going to be renewed for another year. Um, and not every episode is going to look pristine, but a lot of the folks that would be doing this are going to be involved yep. with Digimon for a while. So they're shifting to a different department for Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Now, this type of stuff happens all the time, though. Like, this happens even outside of Japan. So I think people are worried, and I understand why. This is one of the main reasons that people don't think that Dragon Ball Super or the anime is gonna come back anytime soon. And exactly what Geekdom is saying here, that the animators that worked on DBS Broly, a lot of them are working on other projects right now. I don't know if those other projects are paying them more, or they that's what they had set up to work on those projects such as Digimon, Dragon Quest, and so on, they work on those projects and so there's not going to be any time for them to come back and do a full-fledged anime. So with that being said, it is safe to assume that a lot of the animation in, or at least a good chunk in DBS Super Superhero is not going to be from the same team that made Dragon Ball Super Broly. Now, is Shintani still going to be in it? They've been extremely hush-hush on that subject. Shintani was there for the Alan C celebration. He made an animation for Dragon Ball for that celebration, but besides that, it's been all quiet on the Western Front when it comes to Shintani and this new movie. And when we watch just anything from this new movie, the character designs look like they were from Toriyama himself. The sheets look like Toriyama, uh, similar to Shintani, and so it could be said that maybe Shintani is part of this, but when you watch the trailer and you see Goku the way he looks, you see his hair not moving, you see that it's mixed with CGI, it is highly possible that we're going back, we went back to a form of animation like the Yamamura animation where all these characters are extremely stiff, similar to how they were in the majority of Dragon Ball Super. So you have them not being able to move that well and then at the same time mixed with 3D animation such as Blender. It's just not, it, that's the problem that a lot of people have with the movie at this point is that they fear that this movie is not going to look good at all when it comes to that aspect, when it comes to the animation aspect. And it definitely is not your father's Dragon Ball. It's not even, it's not even your brother's Dragon Ball Super Broly. Like it, it's something entirely new. And I mean, other projects are, are here. So if this movie, these movies, say there's one more after this, if they're all going that CGI route while other animators are working on other projects and when the anime comes back, these animators will be done with those projects and come back to the anime, that would explain why we are pushing to CG also. But there are other advantages to CG that Opie is going to go over here. Once you make a model, you can always reuse it. 
right? So modeling is actually one of the longest parts of 3D animation. Right. So you're there, you're modeling and sculpting the character. You make one character of Goku. Well, guess what? You can now reuse him. And you just tend to have the same clothes, same outfit. So they can make now more you can movies reuse him for the, the next movie. The next movie, yeah, same model, yeah. With same model. They build that Piccolo's house. They build it one time. They can reuse it as many times or, as they want. Or they could also make adjustments. So if you've got the Goku, let's say you've got the Goku model, but you want to change him to having the Dragon Ball end of Z gear with the blue, you can just recolor it blue. And you still have the model, you just recolor it blue. It just, it's almost like, it's almost like taking a piece of art and just like wiping the color and just re recoloring yes. it like that. Like, and it, it's, it, it's, it's useful. So when Opa was explaining this part of the video, I was thinking of Space Jam 2, where the WB executives was giving LeBron the pitch from the AI, where they could like literally copy him in a CG form into any movie and put him anywhere. It'd be super cheap, it'd be super convenient. He wouldn't have to be there. It's just a carbon copy, but you can put him in any, any environment, anything like that. That's exactly what I was thinking when he was explaining it. But he's got a point. Once you actually make that model, which is the most expensive part, which I know because for my outro, I had to pay extra for Devil Artemis when he created my outro for 18 Black, which is the Android 18 you see at the end of my outro. I paid extra because it was a custom made model and everything on it was extremely hard to make. But once it was done, we had her, we can do whatever we want with her and there you go, boom. That's exactly the same thing that Opai is saying here. Once you have it, you can literally make a million movies and not pay a cent more. I mean, maybe for if you have them with different outfits, but like, if you have him with the same outfit he's always had, which Goku has, he had a different one in this Universe 6 tournament, went back to the original because, I don't know, marketing reasons? Well, now you can put him in anything and that makes sense for 3D. And to me, it's a huge one-up that 3D animation has on 2D animation. Because just because they're working on 3D doesn't mean that 2D animation is suddenly dead at toy animation. Right. 2D is still their bread and butter. So what makes more sense is for them to have a team that split. You have one team that's working on the 3D, and you don't even have to have the same animators. You can bring a whole new set of uh, workers it's a different who department. specialize on 3D. Right. Now, there are there is a, a lot of cross because you still you can still do kind of 2D with 3D, but the, the, the main point, point when they're trying to make is that the TV series for Dragon Ball, I believe, is still going to be 2D, and then the movies are going to transition into 3D, assuming that this movie is successful. Right. Uh, and I think people have been saying stuff like, well, they're doing this because the loop in the third movie was big and there's a lot of American movies that are 3D, like the Pixar films. That could be what's going on. That's probably part of the business reason as to why they're doing it. But you're right in that it saves them on money, it saves them on staff. And if they have their staff working on other shit like One Piece and, and whatever then it makes sense at least to put out a Dragon Ball product because they know that Dragon Ball, they have to keep pumping out Dragon Ball in order to keep people satisfied. It's going to happen. So as they're explaining this, I was thinking in my head about Berserk, how it was all 3D. It came out, the entire anime came out all 3D. There are other animes that have come out that are entirely made out of 3D. So I don't think that it is 100% it's 100% uh, set in stone that the anime will be 2D be, and then the movies will be 3D, two separate departments. It, it's a good hypothesis. In, in my opinion, my humble opinion, it's that if the movie is 3D and it is extremely successful, then they will probably end up merging the anime as a 2D, 3D type of thing until we won't be able to tell the difference and then the anime will be 3D because of not only how cheap it is how easy it is to do it and how um and just as a larger whole i i believe that what they're doing with the dragon ball movies at this point is i think that they're trying to gain the larger world audience as a whole so broly everybody knows who broly is everybody was super excited to see broly everybody wanted to see broly and that was a super popular thing that they jumped on so you knew dragon ball super broly was going to do numbers but uh this new movie seems uh, seems like slice of life but we don't exactly know 100 percent yet but what i'm trying to get that is that the title of the movie dragon ball super superhero what does really well out here in the west what has been killing it the last 10 years superheroes 
So to put Dragon Ball Super Superhero in the title, I'm not saying that the title is going to lie or anything like that because I do believe there's going to be a lot of superheroes in this movie. Maybe like ones that are brand new, Great Sandman, Pan maybe become a superhero, and I think there will be super villains. I think that's the direction they're going to go with this movie with the title and knowing that the, the superhero moniker is extremely iconic. Everybody's going to know what that is. But I do see that they, that they probably have noticed the popularity of superheroes in the past not even just out here in the west you have my hero academia you have other anime like one punch man that are doing really really well doing numbers so at the same time you have all this coming out so of course they're going to be pandering almost to the west and pushing this product ab abroad which is weird because it seems like toy animation doesn't like anything in the west covering their anime but they want to push all this they, they want to push their stuff on us though and they want to and they want to like make sure that we get on board with what they're selling and, and yet they're still copywriting striking us so it, it's it's a double-edged sword but again if they do if this number if this movie does do very well if this movie is a, a a box office hit then i think that the future of dragon ball even the anime is going to be cg i think here we go with the criticism i think that toriyama's writing has not been up to par at all recently even though i like broly it has not been as good as the old stuff, anywhere near as good. In fact, some of it's been straight up trash. But oh look, old Pi criticized it. Oh my god. Honestly, in the in, in the in the comments, yo, I'm just being honest with y'all. Like it's it's just not that good. I don't think I'm not saying it's all bad, but it could be better, especially compared to the old stuff. But um I just hope the movie has a good story to go along with the visuals. So I agree here with uh, with Geekdom on the fact that the story aspect of Dragon Ball has suffered a lot and it's nowhere near what it used to be in Dragon Ball Z. And I think that the main reason for this across the entire board is Toei Animation. So I believe that Toei Animation has been pushing and pulling and morphing Dragon Ball into the most advertiser friendly type of thing that they could possibly possibly do. Why am I saying this? Well, the anime itself rarely had any gruesomeness, rarely had any blood. The Dragon Ball Super anime, like it, it just it never really went into those waters. And so there was a lot of stuff that just seemed like kid friendly, like child safe. The, the story never changes. There are no consequences to the Tournament of Power. There are no consequences to Moro. There's no consequences to Broly. There's no consequences to almost anything that happens in Dragon Ball at all. That, that's, that's all because they're trying to keep everything just exactly the same as it was. They're not trying to move everything and change everything to make it better. They're not trying to take any risks with Dragon Ball. When Toyotaro tries to make new characters, tries to make or take any risks at all, He's always pulled back into Goku needs to save the day. It's only Goku and Vegeta. That's the reason we've only seen Goku and Vegeta stories because they know that they make the most amount of money. They're the most recognizable of the two characters. So that's why the story is getting hurt by this. It's literally just Goku and Vegeta time right now. And it just, again, the whole thing seems to be morphed by Toei. And Toriyama doesn't seem to have, like, not only the gusto to make brand new stories as intriguing as, say, the Cell arc, even Boo, honestly, anymore, um, without any input for anybody else. But he seems to be more into trying to get into that, like, comedy slice of life stuff. I guarantee you, most of the jokes from Dragon Ball Super Broly were, were him. They were his work. A lot of those characters were his work. Jocko came in because of him. So he likes that kind of funny stuff. So this movie is probably going to have a lot of that and input from to to Toy Animation on the, on the action of it. But again, I think it's because there are too many cooks in the kitchen right now and you have a really old cook in there that only knows how to do like the one recipe and doesn't even know how to do it that well anymore. That's that's the scenario that I'm giving you. And then you have to Toyotaro who is the new cook, but the old cook won't let him change up the recipe too much and the restaurant doesn't want him to change the recipe at all. That's the best scenario that I can give you for what's going on with Dragon Ball right now. Once they can take some risks, once they can go beyond Z, they can go into the GT territory, they can go into the future, they can focus on other characters, and Toriyama gives up and lets everybody, lets Toei and Toyotaro take the lead on Dragon Ball, and Toei Animation lets Toyotaro kind of like take the reins as to what he wants Dragon Ball to be. I mean, hopefully then we get Dragon Ball AF, I guess, <laughs> I don't know. But thank you so much 
for watching the video guys this was an interesting take into another content creator's uh thoughts on the subject of dragon ball super superhero let me know what you guys think this is going to be blackscape signing off take care guys subscribe for more content <laughs>